Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. As you've heard, my name is Asenath Kwamboka, and today I'm honored to just be in the presence of the Lord. So I think I'll release the praise team to go have their seats. My name is Asenath Kwamboka, William Meskia. Uh, first of all, I'll just allow you to have your seats. Um, and today, as the Lord would have it, I am the speaker of the day. I'm honored to be in the presence of our bishop, the pastors, that they saw it twice that I should speak to you today. I'm really grateful. I'm a daughter in the house. I'm a product of grace. I'm not here on my own. I'm here because the grace of the Lord has been sufficient with me and for me. So I'll start a little bit of introduction about myself. I know most of you don't know me. I'm a wenye menyona mna nyonanga kwa camera. Nyonanga ule mstianawa media. So who is mstianawa media? I just want to give us a bit of who I am, where I've come from, and where I am today. I brought this Bible intentionally today. Mnona i Bible. Two things were going through my mind when I was called, and I was told, you shall be our speaker on the Ladies' Sunday on 3rd. I was in the office when I was called, so I was like, Sawa, thank you, thank you. I'm honored, nikaenda kwa nyumba. No, nikiwa kwa nyumba ndio ilianza kusink. <laughs> Nimeambiwa nikuje ni speak. Nikaanza kujiuliza, asana tulisikia vizuri lakini. Kwa nini ulitikia? And then I was like, sasa is there a loophole for me to get out of this? Kwa sababu Everyone will be looking at me. Ata saizi simna niangalia. This is what I was fearing. That everyone will be looking at me. Wakingoda ni wape neno. And I prayed and I was telling God. Sasa mungu ni wewe. Si mimi. Ni wewe. Ni wewe. Sasa uende. Uangeleshe the pastoral team. Waone mimi. Kuna vile... Lady Sunday is a big deal. And then they give me maybe on a week, weekday, Wednesday, if it was here, up on a zuki and sanga, Wednesday, kidogo, kidogo, nenda, ukisonga. So he na feel ni kama by fire. Naskiangele baptism by fire. That is how I'm feeling. So the reason why I've shown you this Bible is because this Bible, I bought it in 2013. I actually wrote the, when I bought it, I wrote the date, 2013, 4th of November. And it is from me, uko imeandikwa, to, date, na from, na nikaandika from me. So, this Bible, I, wrote, I, wrote, I bought it when I was in first year. Nilikuwa ni mingi, I was admitted on 28th of October, and on 4th of November, I bought this Bible. I'm sure most of you are like, wow, wow. She was in fire for God to go to the campus. Now, the reason why I bought this Bible is what you should be asking. Me, Nikenda Campus, the, the stories I had been told about how good campus is, me, Nilikwa Nimenda could have life. So, nilikuwa niende ni have life alafu tupatane na mungu tukirudi after campus. But, there is one thing that my mom used to tell us. Ukiogopa, chukua biblia yako, karibu na wewe. So, I bought this Bible, not because I had the intention of reading it. My intention was not reading it at all. My intention was, this Bible was to be my protection. As I was going to have life, he be believing, you're going to protect. 
That is the reason why I bought this Bible. And as the Lord would have it, somehow, somehow, I met evangelists to go to campus. Sijui, I can't tell you how I found myself in church. But again, I would go to church, time your praise and worship, praise and worship, ikisha tu hivi, nimeto, nimetoka. And somehow, somehow, as the Lord would have it, nikekwa prayer mam. So, it means that zile Sunday nilikuwa naruka kutokuenda church, Monday to Friday, I am having prayers that I'm leading for 30 minutes. Now, the first thing on Sunday after kanisa ni kuuliza wa shirika, mulienda kanisa ni. So, what does that mean? I, I have to be in church. Siwezi uliza mtu kama alienda kanisa na mimi siku wa kanisa ni. So, I also now devised her another way. Nenda kanisa ni, Prison worship ikianza hivi immediately si wakati maombi inaanza 8 naingia around 9 and then nakaka na preacher kisha ingia kila mtu ako amezama kwa neno I, I get out everyone else would have seen me during praise and worship sindio and somehow somehow as the lord would have it in third year nikae kwa CU secretary Nani wanajua kazi ya CU secretaries mostly kwa, 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 kwa nini na kwanga nini? Kwa CU? Now I'll tell you for those who don't know. The CU secretary is the person who calls the preacher. Ni yaya kwa na program. Ni yaya naita preacher. Ni yaya na, ana make sure preacher mekuja. Preacher spo kuja hiyo siku, wewe CU secretary ukwe na neno. Ama ukwe na mtu umefanya nini? Ume prepare. Mark you, all this time, I've not been found in a Sunday service kuskiza preaching. Yes, I would go to kwa prayer, kila mtu anapea na neno. So unawapea schedule, wewe ni Monday. By the time inafika Friday, the only thing you've done is prayed for them. But as the Lord would have it, I became the CEO secretary. You need to anini baptism by fire. And when I became the CU secretary, nikapewa nini? That mandate. So I have to call the preacher. I have to be in the service very early. Ku make sure you preacher mefika. Present worship the moment wanaingia, napigia, umefika. Akifika, lazima nikae, ni mskize kwanza amalize. Halafu mimi badu ndio nampeleka malipa, mankuli. By fire? By force. So, years later, I bring you to 2024. 2023, let's start from there. Between 2026, when I finished school, yes, 2016. 2016, that's when I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? Yes, I'm that old. That young. Oh, you want me to be young? Yes, I am that young. Yes, I am that young. 2016 to 2020. I've never... I think I stepped in a pulpit in 2018. As life would have it, I was just somewhere cruising through life. And in 2020, time ya corona, mungu wakani kujia mwenye, mwenyewe. I joined this church in 2021. 2020, ilikuwa ni time ya corona, atukuwa tunenda kanisani. So 2021, by the time we were in 2021, kanisa zilikuwa zinafunguliwa kidogo, zinafungwa. Zinafunguliwa kidogo, Zinafungwa. So me joining DCIKZ was because ilikuwa karibu na mimi. Na, ni corona, you never know utaenda lini. <laughs> ni ukweli, ama, am I lying? I was like, I knew God. My mom speak, every time my mom calls me, she's like, umeomba leo, 
tuombe. She will even recite for you a memory verse every single day. My mom recites a memory verse for me when we are on the call. And so I joined this church. And my intention was because si juu nitaenda lini. So lazima nikuwe karibu na na Mungu. And then now from there my journey started in Daisy Kezi. 2022, I was not serving that time. I used to come morning service. Ikisha tu hivi. Mimi nimeenda nyumbani. I didn't know anyone in church. 2022, Mungu akanikujia mwenyewe. I remember, have you ever had a desire to serve? You don't know where that desire has come from. I remember nikisumbua kimu. Kwa like kimu nilikwambia nataka kuserve. Uliongelesha nani? Until I found myself in media. Last year again, God came for me. Nika join SOL. In 2024, ni January, hata atujasonga. God has already come for me. Praise God. Our topic of today, empowered to live my purpose. Um, Isaiah 41, 14 to 16. When you hear the word empowered, what comes into your mind? Media, Isaiah 41, 14 to 16. When you hear the word empowered, what comes into your mind? The first, the first time I interacted with this topic, we let Leona the word empowered to live my purpose. Empowered. Unananga ile emoji nafanya hivi? Najua, naona watu wameanza kufanya hivi, muna itumianga sana, sindio? To say the truth, that is the emoji that came into my mind. Ile emoji, ya? Hivi. So, empowered. Empowered is to give someone authority or power to do something. To give someone authority or power to do something. Another definition I found that was really, like, resonated with me. Make someone stronger and more confident, especially in controlling their lives and claiming their rights. Praise God. Isaiah 41, 14 to 16. Let's read together. Hmm. Next verse. Praise God. I want us to go to the first uh, 14, verse 14 again. Just first 14. So when I was given this topic and I went and interacted, my prayer was, Mungu aguze the pastoral team one that is by fire, by force, wanitoe wanipeleke Wednesday. And then I read this. Do not fear, you warm Jacob. You men of Israel, I will help you, declares the Lord. And your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Do you think I, 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 I think there is a way you made a mistake. Did you mean on a Sunday service? Why? Because the word was, do not fear. When you hear the word empowered, we've said, as, I, as I've given you, the definition is to make someone stronger, to give someone authority. Praise God. I happen to be a firstborn in my family. So, first, how many firstborns do we have? Wow. Sisi ni wengi. So, you know, when your parent is not in, you are the, you are the parent, right? So, utamambia tukua ipeleka kwa meza. Huitaji maswa? Maswali. Akikuliza maswali, you become your mother. <laughs> right? 
And then what happens to second bonds? Wakati now they are coming to tell me to do something. What do they do? Mami amesema. Am I lying? Do they come and tell you toi kikombe hapa? Mami amesema utoe viomba kwa kwa meza. They have to use the name of the authority. Sindio? Because the mother is the authority. But me, when I'm given that chance, I don't use Atimama Alisema. From since when? You take it, Upeleke Wapi? Jikoni. So when I was interacting with this and looking at the authority, that is what came into my mind. This is us being given the authority. You don't go and say, the God of my mom. You say, my God. You don't say, tuliambiwa tumepewa. I think this week, those who have been in the ladies' conference, the speakers of this week have been just amazing. The word has just been amazing. If you interacted with either of the days, you will just go and you will hear every day there was something new, something stronger for us, right? And if you interacted with this, uh, this week's topics, you are the instrument, right? You are the instrument of power. Power ije kwa hapa na wewe ukae kwa hapa. Wewe ndio instrument of power. So power has been vested in you. So when you talk about empowered to live my purpose, one would ask, what is purpose? The reason for which, so purpose is the reason for which something is done or created. I would want us to just go to the book of Acts. 1, 8. As we wait for that. In the book of Isaiah, we will go back there. But in this book, you find that God is encouraging his people not to be afraid. Kindly read with me, Acts Praise God. You will receive when what comes upon you? When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit to you? Helper, others are saying helper, others are saying power. The Holy Spirit is the helper that Jesus Christ left for us. As he was ascending, he said, I shall send you a helper. So do not fear. When you read this, one of the characters that comes in mind is Peter. Peter is a very interesting character. I love watching movies. So when I, sometimes when I read the Bible, I see the characters in the Bible as characters in a movie. Somehow, somehow. See the way you would look and you're like, the director just looked at that character and I compare your role. That is the same way when I look at Peter. Then you start asking, what was the role of Peter? Peter, Alikwa, you see, like, have you ever seen Ndama Ndogo? That is how I picture. See where unam picture ni mimi nam picture. Have you ever seen Ndama Ndogo enye konaena jivile na rukarukanga? It is everywhere, right? It is everywhere. It's it's just everywhere. It just wants to be everywhere. If you look at Peter, Peter is the disciple when Yaliona, Jesus ako juya maji. Hata mimi nataka kuwa uko. Sindio? Can I come? And he was there. Peter is the same character. When Jesus was telling him he will deny him three times, he was like, no, me. I will even die for you. He was telling Jesus like that. Sindio? I will die for your sake. I cannot deny you. But when the hour came, is it the rubber hits the ground or what hits the ground? Yes. What did Peter do? Nikama Peter alikuwa amesoma ile script ya deny deny deny. Sindio? So Peter denied Jesus three times. But what happens when the Holy Spirit came upon him? 
Kwanza alikuwa ameambiwa when he was denying Jesus he was told your mannerism the way you speak the way you act looks like you are a disciple of Jesus he was like no i am not mimi karibu amulize mimi suacha ni kushow si mimi angekuwa kwa hii generation yetu maybe angekuwa anasema hivyo but when the holy spirit came upon him he was able to step into the position of leadership right Hakuwa, he was no longer the shy peter he was no longer the peter who was saying no i don't want to be identified by jesus labda watani crucify jesus had already gone sindio and this time peter was alone here but the holy spirit gave him the empowerment that he needed to be able to speak boldly about christ you will find that all of us have been given that mandate to be empowered we it is a, it's like something in eco at our disposal empowerment is at our disposal the only thing that needs is us to tap into that empowerment we've already been given the mantle to to take charge but we have not yet taken others have others have not God empowers us for our purposes. There's that one thing maybe kwa kwa hati yako uko like I need to do this but una feel eh yeah. ni mimi kweli mimi siwezi. But then when you realize that you've already been given the power, you've been already empowered, you'll be able to forge forward. God created us for a purpose one may ask what's my purpose right god created us for a purpose one may ask what's my purpose want just to read from the book of jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 to 10 please read with me Praise God. When you start reading that, most of us usually read the first chapter 1 verse 1, right? Before I put you in your mother's womb, before you were conceived, I knew you, right? I had already consecrated you. I had consecration means I had already set you apart. I had already set you apart. Sometimes you might ask yourself maybe you'll hear a story you can be you an oops baby. Naskenga wale oops we have a baby. Sindio? Si kuna wenye uliambiwa hivyo. Wewe ulikuwa oops baby. So you start wondering if even my parents didn't plan for me. Why am I in this world? But wewe oops baby, what has the Bible said? Before he even made you an oops baby to your parents to your parents wewe ni oops baby ama unplanned for ama accidental but to god you were not here by accident you just did not find your how could surprise god at god ako like guy wangeshi amekuja <laughs> there was nothing like that 
God was not surprised by your presence in this world. And before he even decided that your parents are going to carry you, your parents are going to nurture you, he already had a purpose over your life. He had already set you apart. Before even ukuzo to grace na presence yako, God alikuwa mejua wewe unakuza kunifanya kitu flani in my kingdom. When I was reading this and I was just wondering, I was just remembering to kiwa wadogo. When your mother introduces you, maybe you are the, as we are four in our family. So we, one of the things that I had is a privilege of just walking with my mom every time. Kwa sababu sasa mimi lazima nishikilia wengine wado? Wadogo. So when he's introducing and I can introduce aje. Ama mkiwa wawili, mkiwa pekenu wawili, mnetembea, mepatana na rafiki yake, and then now she's introducing you. And I can introduce her, Ade. Uu ni ule mstana wangu mkubwa. Ama anakuambia, hujui huyu. Unajua ule wakwanza. Sasa huyu ndi anamfua, anamfuata. That is all your parent can introduce you kiwa at a young age. Did your parent ever introduce you? Kasa, uu ni ule daktari, ya huyu atakua daktari wangu. Nani yali introduce you? you? Nani yali introduce you? You know, you, you might find their parents who are ready for us, so what you will be. Hakuna, sindio? Ulikuwa uyu ni ule mtoto wangu wakwanza ama wa? Wapili. Ama ni uyu? Unajua ka JJ? Sasa, huyu ndi wanafuata? <laughs> but to God, He is not introducing you at wewe ni wamana. Ma, uyu ni ule mtoto wama manani wakwanza? You are not even mama nani's child at that time when God is looking at you. When God looks at you, he sees the priest that he created. When God looks at you, he sees that evangelist who is going to bring people to his kingdom. He does not see you at KJJ. We have JJ here. You see, he sees. If you look at what Jeremiah was saying, Jeremiah was, uh, was saying, you can put that up, media please, for me. In verse, verse 2, uh, not verse 2, verse 6, 6, mm -hmm. no, verse 6, 6. Ah, Lord, God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a young man. If you read the message Bible, at I make it worse. And I say, I am only a boy. Yes, that is what Jeremiah is telling God. God, I do not know how to speak. I am only a boy. Verse 7. But the Lord said to me, what does the Lord say? Praise God. God is assuring here, Jeremiah, that do not just say, I am only a boy, or I am just a girl. Because everywhere I send you, I shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Now, we start with the purpose, right? And then God now is telling Jeremiah, that this purpose that I have created you for, I shall equip you. I shall empower you. You don't need to be empowered by anyone else. I am the one who will. He says, I shall go with you. I want to, to just tell you today, there is more to you than just being a kagal or a kaboy. When God created you, akwa naka jeji, he saw that big person that you're going to be. So what is needed is for you to be able to tap into that that the Lord says about you. Praise God. Jeremiah was a man like us. And he was empowered to be the mouthpiece of God. Relay God's own message to his people. Praise God. Jeremiah yeye kidiangalia na jiona hawezi. But when God looked at him, he saw the mouthpiece that he, he created. 
Just a question to you. When you look at yourself today, who do you look at? Kijangalia kwa miru unonanga nani? Sinijibu. Who do you see when you look at the mirror? When you look at yourself and think about your life, who do you see? Do you see that instrument that God created, that God will empower for his purposes? Or do you see yourself as just someone who is just cruising through life? We are not cruising in life. The moment you are called by Jesus, the moment you identify yourself as God's child, you're not, no, you are no longer cruising through this life. Because before he formed you, he had already purposed for you. Praise God. When I look at that, and this being the ladies' conference, I think I can, we can look at Esther. Who knows Esther? Kila mtana just oria Esther, right? If you read Esther, you'll realize Esther was just a, a poor girl again. She had been orphaned, she had lost her parents. Akachukuliwa na nko yake modekai. And you would look at her in the beginning maybe of Esther, no murumie, ko like oh ye, this girl. Right? But then when you finish reading the book of Esther, you are like, wow. I also want to be like Esther. Do you think God knew what he was doing when he ensured that Esther had to end up with a relative? I don't know whether, I don't know, maybe, Pastor, you can help me. Kuna relative mungina me mentioni wa kwa Biblia except Mordecai. See, sometimes you can be taken by another relative. But God purposed that Esther would be taken specifically by Mordecai, who was doing what? Who was working at the palace, right? Do you think it was coincident that God aliangalia tu wakona? Wacha uyu tu wa mchukue. Do you think it was a coincidence? This is just to submit to you. Wherever you are, whatever process that you've gone through, it is not by accident. It is not by accident. If you look at what God, if you just sit down and just take time and look at what God is doing in your life, you will realize that he has been very intentional. God is not a respecter of persons. So he does not discriminate. Because when he created you, he had already purposed for you. No matter what happens, no matter what people say about you. Hato ukiangalia, watu wanangalia familia yako wanashanga. He, he familia. Have you ever been in a place, Mali? People look at you, they know you can't speak anything because of your background. But let me submit it to you. God is not a respecter of persons. If you even look at the life of Jesus, you remember when the Pharisees were saying, Who you Jesus? See, that is what they were saying. But Jesus ended up to be the savior of the world, right? I'm a first, first generation graduate. In my family, I think I'm the third girl to go to university. I'm the third girl to go to university. So if you look at the probability, what were mathematics, such as Kidogo, if you look at the probability of me getting into university, it was very slim. Because my parents happened to be last months in their families. And we happened to be among the young people. But yeah, when God says that he has already appointed you, no one can say otherwise. No one has power to say anything about it. Just a few pointers. How do you overcome 
the fear that we get and get empowered for your purpose. It's very simple. First of all, who are you? Do you know your identity? Do you know your identity? Who are you? A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, God's own. God's own. I think you can take me to Isaiah 41.8. Isaiah 41.8. Now I get what Bishop has been saying. He time me nakimbia. Isaiah 41.8. It says, But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I, the Lord, have taken from the ends of the earth and called you from its remotest parts and said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and I have not rejected you even though you are exiled. Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid. Sorry. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured, I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, of salvation. Indeed, all those who are angry with you will be put to shame and humiliated. Those who strive against you will be as nothing and will perish. You shall search for those who quarrel with you. There's, those, there's another version that says those who fight with you, but will not find them. They, they who war against you will be as nothing, as nothing, Verse 13, for I am, I the Lord, you are God. I who? I the Lord, keep hold of you, of, of your right hand. I the Lord, who, sh who says to you? Praise God. God has called you, you are his own. Meskia those situations zenye uliambia God kuja peke yako na usitume malaika. Sindio? Here he says I the Lord. I say me I the Lord ama I will send I the Lord will hold your right hand. First of all we've been given an identity. We are his children. So the first thing is for you to understand your identity. Because the moment you understand your identity, it changes everything and your perspective about what you are able to do. Understand the promises of God upon us. That is the second point, as his children. When you understand the promises of God, you are able to lean into them. The Bible says... You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you. And that is the kind of truth that you need to know, that you are his children. That he says, no matter what, I shall be your protector. Right? Understand the kind of power we possess as children of God. Now that brings us to, the, to our theme, threshing the mountain. Right? Isaiah 41, 14, media team. Fifteen. Uh, go to sixteen, I think sixteen. What will you be able to do? You will winnow them, and the wind will carry them away. And a a high wind will scatter them, but you will rejoice in the Lord. You will no, let's start from 15, 14, 14, 15. Do not fear, you warm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, declares the Lord. And you, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. 15. So this is the power you've been given. In fact, I have...
Praise God. This is the kind of power you've been given. When you understand that this is the kind of power you've been given, will you be running away from the devil? Will you be fearing? Will you be fearing? This is to just ask you, do you come to church because you fear or because of the relationship you know you have with God? Mimi nilinunua hii Biblia kwa nini? Uoga nilikuwa naogopa sijui watu naenda kukaa na wao kwa hostel. So because of what my mom had told me aliniambia Bible itafanya nini? Praise God. So are you in church because you fear? Or ile nini saying ya one day in church chases the devil away. Is that why you're here? Or are you here because you have a relationship with God and you're here to just fellowship with him? Praise God. Amen. If you read in uh, the, just, the, the, the verse that we've just read, that gives us the fourth point. Understanding what we have been called to do with the kind of power that we have been given. Once you understand the kind of power you've been given, now you understand what you've been called to do. The Bible says you've been given dominion, right? To take dominion. If we read, uh, I think media team, you can bring up the verse of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. It says, See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to uproot and break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. If you think, if we just take a minute and think about such power, you're able to uproot stronghold, right? You're able to overthrow kingdoms. This is just to ask you, which is that position Maybe because that position ni watu wenye wako na masters wanapatanga. Most of us are in the marketplace, right? There are positions that you've been looking at unaona hiyo iko na wenyewe. Siku na zile zenye unaonanga zina advertise alafu mnaambiana na colleague, we? Hiyo iko na wenyewe. Si ndio? What if today, today you look at that position that you've been desiring and tell God, you told me, I have the power to take dominion, to take, to build, and to plant, to overthrow. Right? You have been given that power in you, but you take that power. Have you claimed that power that you've been given as an instrument of power? That is a question to you. Which is that mountain that you are afraid to thresh because you feel like maybe you do not qualify to thresh it? Which is that mountain that you think is so high that cannot be threshed in your life today? Today is just to submit to you. You have the power within you to thresh that mountain. You have that power. The other thing is understanding the time and seasons. Understanding the time and seasons that we are in. If you look at Mordecai, when I look at the character of Mordecai, I told you I love watching movies. You will just look at it and when you analyze it, you're like, what exactly has Mordecai been brought to do in the life of Esther? He's a destiny connector. You might have been a destiny connector to connect someone, but you've not risen up to that position to connect someone. Mordecai, the moment he heard that a queen is needed, he didn't go to consult and ask, are Jews allowed to come in? Kuna mali tumiona ati alienda kukonsult. We are told he went and brought Esther. Right? Akambia esto usiseme wewe ni Jew. Don't identify yourself. Because 
I think about it and I'm like, if Esther had come and declared in the beginning that he's a Jew, maybe I'm going to eliminate you, right? But Mordecai, who had been working in the palace, had prior knowledge. How do I get Esther into this palace? It's through her hiding, her identity, right? And you realize that Esther was not, not just brought to the palace out of nowhere. It was not an oops, Esther mefika kwa palace. Oops, Esther kwa api? Hati ya mekua queen. The Lord purposed for Esther at such a time as that, Esther to be in the palace so that she will be the savior to her people. Praise God. If Mordecai had not understood the seasons and the times, would Esther have saved the Jews? Because if you read the Bible very well, you would understand that Haman was not a fan of Jews. He just hated them. We are not told why he hated them. He just hated those people. But what happened? God had already planned. Before even Haman could come and say, now we want to kill these people, all of them, Wakufe, Tubaki Pekeetu, God had already planned. And he had placed Esther in her position of favor. That by the time Esther is approaching the king, she's not begging. Favor was on her side. You hear the king is even like, tell me what you want. Even half of my territory I shall give you. Why? Favor was with her. God had purpose for her to be the savior of the Jews. And God's plan had just been aligned. Praise God. So understanding times and seasons. What are some of the things that make us not to be the instruments of power that we've been made? What are some of those things? One of it is fear. One of it is fear. If you look at the Bible, actually the few scriptures that we've read, I'm sure you've understood God is telling his people, do not. Why? God knows that fear is the biggest enemy. That is the weapon that the enemy uses to just bring us down. And that is why every time God is telling and assuring you of his power, he says, do not fear, for I am with you. So if you are not submitted to God, if you do not get to understand the kind of power that you have, the enemy takes advantage and instills fear in in you. So you are afraid of taking dominion. You are afraid of taking those positions of leadership because you think, see, work for 10 years. I remember when we started looking for jobs after campus, we looked after job, we had 10 years experience. Like the, the least job, we had two years experience. Oh, we zero experience. We had these people. Is it that there are no jobs for us who are just stepping into the marketplace? For those who have finished school, you would understand that Ukimalizanga Shule, one of, one of the things that comes into your mind, I'm now about to get a white collar job, Nivanga Suti Kungia Kofisi. Everyone in our village will know me. Then reality hits. Unafika uko unambiwa, two years experience, my friend. That is entry level. Like, wanaita entry level, now wanaitaji two years experience. How do we start from entry level na two years like in? But there are people who apply, right? There are people who get those positions, right? Zero experience. So sometimes you need to have the audacity to step into those positions. To take those chances. Because you know the person backing you is more powerful than these two years they are talking about, than these 10 years they are talking about. Praise God. I want us to just quickly read from the book of Isaiah 54, 16 to 17. I just want to read that. 
16 to 17. This is what it says. Listen carefully. I have created the smith who blows on the fire of coal and who produces a weapon for its purpose. And I have created the destroyer to inflict ruin. 17. No weapon that is formed against you will succeed. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. This peace, righteousness, security, and trump of our position is the heritage of? And this is for their? Praise God. The Lord tells you, the enemy that you are afraid of, I'm the one who created him. And he also, verse 17, he assures us, those weapons that he's making have no power over you. Why do you fear the enemy? When you've been told, God has told you, I'm the one who made him. And he's, we know he makes weapons, right? But the weapons that he has made have no power over you. If you get nothing from my sermon today, carry this to, with you. That the Lord is the one who made the enemy. And whatever weapons he's making have no power over you. Praise God. Because you've been empowered for your purpose. You've been given all the weapons that you need. You've been given every equipment that you need to pursue your purpose. Praise God. Another thing that the enemy uses is guilt. Another thing that the enemy uses is guilt. How many times has the enemy reminded you of your past? Hukumbuki last year, Hukumbuki vile ulikuwa kitambo. You don't remember? That is his job. Because he knows he has no power over you. So he has to play with your mind, right? The biggest battlefield over your life is your mindset. That is where the enemy plays with you. And akufanya una feel, you are not as powerful as the word tells you. So it's up to you today to know that. In Cor 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 19, quickly. Second Corinthians, this is what it says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith, in him as Savior, he is a what? Reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition, Behold, the new things have come because spiritual awakening brings in a new life. Which is that area that you need spiritual awakening? Which is that area? Speak to that area. Which is that thing that the enemy is using as a weapon for you? Anashinda kikukumbusha. Now you can be able to speak and tell him that the Bible says, I am a new creation. My former things are no longer part of me. Praise God. The last thing he uses, I think we had, have already talked about this, it's mindset. The mindset. That is where I told you that the biggest battlefield in your life is your mind. The moment you change your mindset... And look upon the things of God. Your entire life changes. Because now you start knowing, Aya, I am strong. Aya, I already am an instrument. Like it's not like I nenda kuchongwa, nilisha chongwa. I've already been given the, the power. I've already been given the mandate over the enemy. The moment you recognize that, everything else in your life changes. 
And that is what you need to pray for today. We do not fight from a point of seeking for victory. We are already victorious. We are already victorious. See at unanza sasa kuambea victory. What did Jesus do if you are praying for victory? When Jesus died on the cross, what did he do? He handed us victory, right? So we are already victors. But what separates us from becoming the person that God created us to be and being the, the, the nature, lukewarm, Christian. You are either lukewarm, ama you are cold. What separates us from there? From the person who has, who has already taken charge is how you think, how you perceive yourself, how you perceive your victory is. Praise God. So this is to just tell you as I conclude. You're already a victor. You've already been empowered for your purpose. Now everything is on your hands. Are you willing to take up that power and pursue your purpose in Christ? Are you willing? Are you willing? Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your word today, O oh God. That Lord of Lords, Father, whatever you brought to us today, O oh King of Kings, Father, let it bear fruits in our lives, O oh King of Kings, Father. Receive the glory, Abba, Father. That Lord of Lords, Father, today I was just an instrument, O oh King of Kings, Father. That Lord of Lords, Father, you will take your glory, and I'll be satisfied that you've taken your glory. Thank you, Jesus. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray, trust, and believe. Amen. Amen.